Hey everybody, I am Keaton, and this is Kid Catholic Season 6, Episode 6, Good News, just two more episodes of The Lisp, um, and then it'll be gone. Um, so I'm happy about that. Also, my eye is almost swollen shut, and it's an infection thingy. Um, so, just gonna have to live with that for a little bit. Thirdly, um, since Lent has come to an end, I am now allowed to talk about Lord of the Rings, so check out this shirt. Breakfast, second bre- breakfast... Elvisness is awesome. So this upcoming Monday, I will be returning to the Busted Halo show with Father Dave Dwyer in New York. Um, the You can listen to it on the Catholic channel Sirius XM 129 on Monday night. I will be on there with Father Dave, so be sure to give that a listen. So uh, for today's topic, I wanted to look back on our Lent. How did we do with Lent? Um, explain how I did with Lent, and basically just look back at Lent and answer the question, was our Lent, was my Lent, was your Lent, was it successful? Um, so what I gave up for Lent, I gave up um, talking about Lord of the Rings, like I said, and watching YouTube, and th- those two things were very hard for me, but they were sacrifices, sacrifices to get closer to Jesus, and did tho- giving up those things make my Lent more successful. After Lent, looking back on Lent, can we call it a successful Lent? And I've sort of heard that term a lot, like, can we call this Lent successful? But what does it mean for it to be a successful Lent? What defines a Lent as successful? Well, like I stated at the beginning of Lent, the ultimate goal of Lent is to, of course, prepare for Jesus' death, resurrection, passion, um, but also to come closer to Jesus. So can we look at the beginning of Lent? Can we go back and look at our prayer life and then come to the end of Lent, look back on our prayer life, and has it progressed any? Have we come any closer to Jesus? Do we have more of a more of a desire to go to Mass or more of a desire to receive the sacraments and get closer, even closer um, with Jesus than we did at the beginning of Lent? Also, have what we gave up for Lent because of that, have we given up some bad practices? Like, um, I want to use an example. For me, uh, I will tell you, Easter morning, I immediately started talking about Lord of the Rings. I'm even wearing the shirt. Um, but I really had no desire to go on and watch YouTube. I, it was almost like there's so much to catch up on. Like, what's the point? I know T-Series passed PewDiePie, and, and from my knowledge, there's not another major event that happened while I was gone. Um, And my sister even, she gave up Dr. Pepper for all of Lent, and then she tasted Dr. Pepper Easter morning and doesn't like it anymore, which I can't imagine how a person wouldn't like Dr. Pepper. Um, But not, so not only has Lent um, allowed us to progress spiritually, but also, um, also some bad habits that we might have gotten out of um, with our Lenten sacrifices. And there's so much that goes into, uh, was it a successful Lent? We also need to look at our Lenten sacrifices. Like I just said, do we have a desire to continue those Lenten sacrifices? And not just because I don't have a desire to watch any more YouTube, but because uh, I might want to give something else up if I have no desire to do that anymore um what else can I sacrifice because sure Lent is a time where we uh, sort of have to give something up um for the duration of Lent and uh, fast um on Fridays throughout Lent but uh, do we have a desire to do that all year round because it shouldn't just be Lent uh and not a desire like Um, I don't like Dr. Pepper anymore, so I will continue to not drink it as a sacrifice. A desire to genuinely sacrifice um, even more for Jesus after Lent and eventually sacrifice all year round. Because if so, that can get us even closer to Jesus. And what I mean by desire is genuine love in our heart like like what did you guys experience i want you to let me know in the comments below what did you guys experience through this lent did you experience a closer relationship with jesus was there was there this desire because i know i know a lot of times looking back on what happened over 2000 years ago throughout his passion and throughout his resurrection um there can become that desire and i've never really understood that how would one desire to sacrifice how would one desire to um to go and give up watching youtube who would desire that right but if we if we get close enough to jesus and if we understand what he went through um like i said at the beginning of lent i talked at the beginning of lent about how these lenten sacrifices that we're doing compared 
to Jesus on the cross is absolutely nothing. Like, there's not even a little bit of a comparison. His was a billion times harder, so we should have that desire. But that doesn't mean that it should be something that is easy for us. It shouldn't be a sacrifice that is easy for us. It should be a sacrifice that challenges us, uh, not only with uh, physically, like our desires that we have to watch YouTube, but also spiritually and grow us closer and closer. I talked about how Lent should be a motivator um, for, should be a motivator to get closer to Jesus. I talked about this all the very beginning of Lent. So looking back on Lent, when you look back at everything, are you motivated? And that's a simple question we have to ask ourselves, um, if we're wondering if it was a successful Lent. If it was a successful Lent, are we still motivated to continue to sacrifice, to continue to come closer to Jesus. Not only our sacrificial life, but also our prayer life. How is our prayer life? Um, or do we still have that desire to, to, to pray a ton of times daily, to go to Mass, maybe to, vi to visit Jesus Christ in adoration? Because we do these all, all of these special things, not just sacrificial things, all of these special other devotions throughout the period of Lent that we do, do we want to continue those? And if so, then we have made it a successful Lent. And it should be really to where if, if our Lent was successful, then we should make all year round our Lent, continuing to sacrifice, continuing to do these devotionals. Just because it's Easter, just because Lent is over, doesn't mean we have to stop. Sure, we can eat meat on Fridays now, even though the Pope asks us not to. We still, we can eat meat on Fridays now. We can do whatever we gave up. But does that mean that we really should? And it also might be one of those things where we want to. We sort of have the desire, yet not fully. We, we have the want. We want to desire it, but we really don't. And that can be the case with a lot of us. And something to help us with that is, sure, Lent, like I said, is sacrifice for Jesus' passion. And yes, he rose on Easter Sunday, yet he still died. Just because Lent is over doesn't mean that Jesus didn't suffer. Doesn't mean that Jesus didn't die. Jesus still died for us. He still went through all that pain for us. And so that can help us to to want to continue to make these sacrifices and devotionals even after Lent. Something else that can motivate us towards continuing our Lenten sacrifices is the Masses at the end of Lent in and of itself, the Holy Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and uh, Easter Sunday. I talked about the Holy Triduum um, in my last video, and spiritually, how did that connect with you guys? Please let me know in the comments down below. I was lucky enough to serve um, those two Masses and that service. Um, it was absolutely um, incredible. So let me know how the Holy Triduum went for you guys. And let me know, spiritually, did it motivate you also, not just Lent itself, not just looking at Jesus' crucifixion, but also the Holy Triduum, did that motivate you? Because Jesus died. Good Friday, it, it, it ha should motivate us to at least sacrifice or continue something. So remember, looking back on Lent, we need to continue to be motivated, continue to uh, be sacrificial for Jesus, and uh, daily, and and please let me know in the comments below how that is going for you. If you have any desire to continue your devotions and your sacrifices, let's get into a good discussion about it. And even those of you who want to have their desire but don't fully, uh, please let comment down below um, how you're going to go with that and if you're going to keep up those Lenten devotionals. So now that the topic is on, do y'all know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! Now, today's Saint of the Week is perfect for the topic. It is Saint Gemma Galgani. Now, I might have done her in, her pa in the past, but I'm pretty sure um, that this is the first time I've ever done her first Saint of the Week. And, um, and if I have talked about her in the past, and it was a while ago. So, let's do Gemma Galgani. Now, uh, St. Gemma Galgani actually has a pretty simple story. She was always holy, holy, always wanted to stay close to Jesus. Growing up, she lost both of her parents, and so she became the mother figure of her seven other siblings. She knew that she wanted to enter the, enter the convent, um, but because of her health, 
um, she couldn't be accepted, which is sad, but, uh, she wanted to enter it, and her heart was there, and she accepted, uh, she heard, um, at least God's call. Something else that is incredible about her is she is one of the few saints lucky enough to receive the stigmata. What that is, is receive the wounds of Christ, uh, 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 two holes in your hands and one in your feet and uh, uh, a pierce in the side. And some saints have have received the stigmata just magically, like not not actually getting hurt and anything forcing it, but they've just received the stigmata, and that's a huge blessing from God. And she uh, received it all the time. It's absolutely incredible. She later died of tuberculosis um, at age 25. However, something that I especially love about her is that she is recognized as the patron saint of temptations. Temptations. And we can have these temptations. I talked about continuing the Lenten sacrifices. The Lenten sacrifices throughout Lent, sure, they're hard. But if we want to continue it after Lent, it's even harder. Meaning that they can be super hard after Lent. And she was able to resist all the temptations and remain holy. You know, a lot of saints you hear about a big tragedy that happened in their life, or some saints you hear about their very sinful lives, then they be, they became close to Jesus. That's not the case with, with Saint Gemma. She remained close to Jesus throughout her entire life, which is absolutely incredible. It's something that we can look to to resist the temptations, to resist the temptations that the devil is trying to keep us from continuing these lenten of practices, trying to keep us from getting closer to Jesus, and no matter what, continue these lenten of practices and devotionals. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video. Please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when I come out a new video. If your family hasn't heard of Kid Catholic, please share this video with them, um, with your friends and family. Also, please comment how your Holy Triduum went, how your Lent went, looking back on Lent. Are you going to continue your sacrifices, continue, um, continue your devotions, and not just because it's easy for you. Also, uh, please visit my website, kidcatholic.com. On there, you can buy your very own Kid Catholic t-shirt. Um, you can contact me. You can read about me. You can uh, see, check out a photo gallery. I actually have a talk um, that I've given up there on my website uh, to a Catholic school in, uh, called Marquette in Tulsa. You can see some of the recent topics I've talked about in my speaking engagements. All of my videos are up there. ton of stuff you can do on there. Also, please sure to check out all three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments below. This thing that I have only here for one more episode. This one, and then the next one, and then it's gone. Thank goodness. So... The list will be gone very, very, very soon, which I'm very grateful for. Also, comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have. I'm, I'm going to start saying ideas regularly now. Comment any saint or topic ideas. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. And, hi, Brielle. Uh -huh.